Hey everyone, my name's Amy. Today I'm back with another Comgrow machine, this time their Z1 10 watt laser. I'm pretty excited to try a couple things on this, but not super eager to do it without fume extraction. Uh, I could do what everyone else is doing and just run it with a fan, but um, conveniently this CO2 laser behind me is big enough uh, for this to fit in, so that's what I'm going to use to test it out. All I need is a small hole where I can run a power cord and USB cable. I'll start by drilling a hole in the sheet metal and then use some laser cut parts, obviously, to make the port. When the cords are in, it won't provide a tight seal, of course, but that's not a problem. None of the gaps around any of the doors and panels on this laser cutter are really sealed, and this is how air is replaced inside the enclosure when fumes are extracted. With the CO2 laser moved to the corner and the table lowered, there's just enough room for this Comgrow laser to fit. I put together this really simple wooden frame out of scrap wood so the laser has something to stand on. Before we actually cut anything, let's talk about air assist. Air assist is important because as you cut, the material from the kerf turns into smoke. Smoke can deposit on the lens, on your part, and ultimately reduces your laser power since the laser is cutting through the smoke before it cuts through your part. Air assist helps clear the smoke away. As a side note, you can also see here how nice it is to support your part away from the cut line. If you were to just lay it on top of a solid surface, there are less options for where the air can go. And actually, there's more smoke generated as the laser tries to cut through both your part and the support surface. The air assist on this Comgrow laser is provided by this fan, which pulls air in through here and blows it out through this surprisingly large diameter opening. My CO2 laser uses a compressor designed for a fish tank that sits down here. Air is then pumped through this tube into this chamber where the only exit is down. Here's a pretty unscientific comparison between these two air sources. Both fill at fairly similar rates. In fact, the Comgrow fan seems to fill a bit faster, but towards the end, it's clear that the compressor can provide way more pressure. I've never even thought about whether high pressure is even important, so let's try a few things. I printed a few replacement nozzles for this red plastic one. This one will still use the fan as the air source, but it has a much smaller opening. This one will use the pump from my CO2 laser as the air source, and it has the same opening as this one. So uh, between these two, we should be able to tell whether or not high pressure matters. Then for fun, I printed up the same things, so fan, and compressor, uh, but this time trying to be fancy and uh, attempting a laminar airflow nozzle. So I don't actually know how to design a laminar nozzle, and I did zero simulation for this one, but I saw something similar posted on Nervous System blog and I had to try it. There's more info in their article, so definitely worth a read you can see what impressive improvements they were able to achieve on their Trotec laser. To compare my nozzle options, I'm cutting a power grid with each one using 5mm plywood. There are tons of great tutorials already on how to make and use power grids, so I won't cover that here. One obvious difference with my nozzles is that the laser light is way less obstructed, but since I consider an enclosure and laser goggles mandatory, this isn't really a design flaw to me. Okay, here are the results. It's really clear that the pump was able to keep the parts a lot cleaner than the fan. Um, when it comes to cutting through, the results seem less consistent. Uh, for example, this row here is a bit unexpected. Um, I suspect most of the inconsistency comes from the fact that the wood itself is not a uniform material, so the plywood will have variations in it that make it easier or harder to cut. Um, it would also appear that my so-called laminar nozzles don't really do anything. Uh, I've probably designed them poorly or did something else wrong anyway. 
you have suggestions, please feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, here is a close-up of the parts to show just how much cleaner the uh, pump um, was able to keep the parts and actually uh, find the exact same thing on the back side. Um, quite surprised how much smoke was able to uh, make it onto the back of these. Um, from the back you can also see just how close some of these squares were to being fully cut out, but um, I actually only counted the ones that could be removed with a light tap because if I were cutting real parts that's what I would want. Um, finally to adjust the ver to adjust for the variation in the material, um, I did go ahead and order some black acrylic um, and repeated exactly the same test. And this time the cut through results were far more consistent, except for this square here. I don't really know what happened. Um, and because acrylic cuts so much cleaner than wood, um, smoke is less, is less of an issue. So when it comes to acrylic, the higher pressure nozzle, I would say, has a pretty limited benefit. Okay, so in conclusion, um, if you plan on doing a lot of engraving or cutting of wood, then improving your air assist with a pump, I think, is a great way to get much cleaner parts. Um, can't really say we can draw a conclusion on the laminar nozzles. I don't think I really did that right, so I have to think a little bit more about that. Um, by the way, making those nozzles was really easy. Um, I 3D printed most of the shape in ABS. Um, then for the tubing barb, I modified these really cheap drip irrigation parts, cleaned up the hole with a drill, and just pressed it in. For the rest of this video, I'll just be sharing my thoughts on this machine, which, full disclosure, ComGrow sent to me for free. Um, I've said it before, I'll keep saying it, I think that laser cutters should be used with an enclosure. Um, enclosures make it way easier to control the fumes and it prevents um, stray laser beams from hitting unsuspecting eyeballs. Uh, in my shop I'm worried about my eyeballs but also those of my dog and my cat who spend a fair bit of time with me here in the shop. So if you do end up getting this machine I strongly encourage you to build an enclosure as one of your first projects. Um, this laser does come with these laser safety glasses, although I wasn't able to find the rating on them, so I recommend just buying a separate pair that are more clearly rated. Um, you'll want to get ones that match the wavelength of this diode. So for example, the CO2 laser behind me and this laser here use different wavelengths, so they'll need different safety glasses. So just make sure you get the, the right wavelength. Um, I also recommend an optical density of 6 plus, um, which means that the laser energy is attenuated to one out of a million, so one with six zeros. Um, from what I can tell, comparing to what I could find on the internet, it's possible that these ones are OD4, so one out of 10,000. Um, that might be good enough, and it's certainly better than nothing. Um, but these ones were $40 and they're way more comfortable to wear. Um, so to me, it's, to me, it's worth it to just get these instead. Um, you're also going to need some software to run this laser. Uh, for me, I like Lightburn. Um, it's really easy to use, uh, and, uh, yeah, never had any problems with it. So that the license for that software is $60. Uh, just as with the ComGrow uh, Robo CNC machine that I played with a few months ago, uh, this machine was super easy to assemble. It's a handful of screws, it takes a few minutes, and for what it needs to do, it feels really nice and rigid, so that's great. Um, I really just have two gripes with this machine. Uh, the first is that I can't believe that it takes four thumb screws to loosen this laser module to move it up and down. Um, if you end up just cutting the same thickness material over and over, maybe you don't even care about this, but it definitely seems like this could have been accomplished with one screw, so it's really annoying in this case that it takes four. Um, my other gripe is uh, 
this cable wrap, which seems like a pretty common way for these kind of like hobby grade machines to cut cost. Um, I really wish instead that they used some kind of uh, laser, uh, sorry, a cable chain like, like this. Um, I think the resulting product just looks a lot cleaner and the movement of the cable is way more predictable, which makes it a lot easier to do things like build a nice enclosure. Um, one kind of weird thing that I found when I was cutting my power grids is that I would get this double line on some of the cuts and I'm pretty sure it's not mechanical because it would happen on mostly the same square um, regardless of where I cut it in the work area um, and I don't really understand how light burn could be causing it so Anyway, if any of you have any ideas, um, please let me know. Um, let's see. This machine is also, it's mostly advertised as an engraver. Uh, and I do very little engraving, but clearly like it's capable of cutting some pretty useful materials. Um, so yeah, I think that like the utility of a machine like this is, is really great. Um, having the, the 10 watt laser module, I think really opens up a lot of um, opportunities. Um, so yeah, in summary, uh, if you are looking for a machine that comes out of the box with a slick enclosure, a great air assist, great fume extraction, and a great way of holding your workpiece as you're cutting them, um, this is not the machine for you. But if you would enjoy building those things yourself, um, and if you'd enjoy like making modifications to this machine, um, I really think there is a potential here for a super useful tool to have in the shop. Um, I don't know if it comes through, but like the work area of this, of this machine is huge. So I think that there's a lot of potential. Um, and on top of that, you get to save, I think a little bit of money, um, making those modifications yourself. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Um, thank you, especially all of you who watched till the end. Um, I'll see you next time.